Father God, I just pray for all my brothers and sisters here right now that every single one of our hearts will be open to you. That right now, Lord Jesus, your Holy Spirit would touch us and change us. That none of us will leave here the same, God. Lord, we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. If you want God to change you today, will you just shout amen? amen. I was uh, home a couple of weeks ago and there was a, a friend of mine I'm not very close to, just kind of an acquaintance with. And God kind of worked it out for me and him to uh, spend some time alone together. We were sitting in a friend's uh, driveway, and he began to share with me. He was a guy that doesn't really talk very much. He began to share with me how, uh, you know, he lost about 70 pounds. He used to, you know, be about 300 pounds. He lost about 70 pounds, was 230. Trimmed himself up and was looking really good. And decided he was going to follow his dream. He was going to be a bouncer of a, of a strip club, and that was just what he wanted to do. And so that's exactly what he did. And he went from one strip club to another, went worked about three different strip clubs and then started uh, talking to me about how he was, had been dating prostitutes and all these kinds of things and hanging around with people that were on drugs and uh, doing cocaine and, and uh, smoking crack and some other things that they were, they were doing. And he began to pour out his heart. And he was a really big, tough guy, you know, a guy that I never thought I would see this. And he began to open up his heart to me and begin to share. And the words that he said to me, he said, he said, man, I've never been so alone in my entire life. I've never felt so lonely. I've never felt like I belong to anybody and like I belong anywhere. I just want somebody to love me. Man, it broke my heart. I sat there and began to listen to him because Satan would have us to believe that, you know, some people out there would think that, you know, the dream he had and the life he was living was, would be a dream come true to some people. And he lived it and he, coming back from it, his experience was, I'm alone. I don't feel like anybody loves me. I feel like all my friends are just out to steal from me. They're just in it for themselves. They don't care about me. They're just all about what they can take from me. And man, as I was hearing that, he was just talking about, man, I just want somebody to love me. I just wish I could be in a relationship with somebody to love me. I just wish I could find somewhere I could belong. I wish I could find all these things. And man, I felt like the Holy Spirit just began to open up my, my mouth and just begin to use me to, to talk to him because some of, some of what I was saying, I was like, ain't no way that's coming from me. And, and so... I just opened up my mouth and began to speak, and, and this is what came out, and I, I totally believe it was the Holy Spirit uh, speaking word to him, and that was, I said, man, listen, you got a gift that there's so many people don't have right now. I said, there's, there's, I don't know how many people are in hell right now, but there's a whole lot of people in hell right now that wish that they could come back and have the gift that you have. So you think it's too late because of the circumstances that's happened in your life. You think it's too late. I was telling him, man, there's things that's happened to you physically. You think it's too late. Your life is over. And I'm telling you right now that there's so many people in hell right now that would love to come back to have the chance that you have. See, because it's not over for you because you're breathing. Your heart is beating. It is not over for you. When, when God is done with you, your eyes will shut and, you're, and you'll never breathe again. But until that point in time, you are not a mistake. You are not an accident. God has a divine purpose and a divine destiny for you and he wants to fulfill it in your life amen i told him i said listen man all those people in hell if they could come back if they could have just one shot if they could have just one chance they wouldn't come back and they wouldn't ask for a relationship they wouldn't ask for somebody to love them they wouldn't ask for a better job they wouldn't ask for a nicer car they wouldn't ask for a nicer house they wouldn't ask for nicer clothes they wouldn't come back and ask to be pretty they wouldn't come back and ask to be smart they wouldn't come back and ask to fit in or have friends but they had come back just so they could stand and have a moment like we're all having right now so instead of saying no and all those chances and moments that they said no that they could come back and say yes This is like what I'd like to read to you today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, it says, That's why we never give up. Christians, we never give up. Absolutely never under no circumstances do we ever give up. It says, Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are quite small, and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us an immeasurably great glory that will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles that we can see right now. Rather, we look forward to what we have not yet seen. For the troubles we see right now will soon be over, but the joys to come will last forever and ever. Can somebody say amen? 
See, whatever you're going through right now is only temporary. It's not going to last very long. It's about to be over. So the word today is this, man. You got a gift that a whole lot of other people wish they could have. You got a gift. You're breathing. Let's take that gift and let's use it to the best of our ability for the glory of God. Let's not give up. Let's not let anything, any circumstances. I know what's going on in your life may be tough. Listen, man, I ain't no different. Tough times hit me too. Tough times hit everybody on this stage. There's all kinds of things that happen to us that want us to try to make us to give up and all these things to just throw our hands up and quit and say, all right, that's it, I'm done. But tonight, man, let's renew our commitment that every single breath we take, that every single day we live will be for the glory of God. Amen. Come on, let's lift up our hands. Let's just pray this simple prayer right now. Say, God, make me ready. Make me ready, Lord. Make me ready. If you were to come back tonight, if I were to die tonight, that I would be ready to go with you and be with you forever. I'd be with you forever. Just pray this simple prayer. Say, God, take my sins away. Change me. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart right now to say, Lord, I want you to come into my heart. I want you to be the Lord of my life. Just ask him to come in right now. Ask him to come in and say, change me, God. Change me. I want to be part of the family of God. Wash my sins away. Make me ready. Wash my sins away. Come on, everybody. Let's sing these words to God with all of our heart. We're going to sing these words. Say, take me away. All right, everybody. Come on. Let's sing it together. Everybody. Take me away. Come on, everybody. From your heart, shout it. Take me Shout out! Take me Isn't it good to be in the family of God today, amen? Man, I love being a Christian. I love being in the family of God. I love, I love being a son of God. I love those things. Let me tell you, I don't, I don't want to make an apology for what we're about today. And I want to say it's okay. We understand. We got so many friends in, in Christian music who don't do what we do. We don't judge them. We don't think they should be like us or anything like that, you know. So I just want you to know that straight up. But, you know, God just called us to speak about our experiences and speak about our relationship with Him. And so we're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to talk about God and we're going to talk about things like that. You know, that's, that's why we're up here and that's what we feel like we, we want or what God wants us to do. And I, I believe we're, the next song we're going to play is a song called Psalms 103. It's an awesome song. It says in Psalms 103, it says, you know, as high as the heavens are above the earth, that's how far... God has taken our sins from us. And as far as the east is from the west, that that's how far he's removed our transgressions from us. Can I tell you something right now? Those of you that prayed the prayer with us right now and just, uh, just asked God to change you, there's something called mercy and grace that takes place in our lives, even though that we don't deserve it, even though that we don't deserve the mercy of God, he wants to give it. And see, there's some, I'm a very excitable person. I get excited when, you know, guys score touchdowns and things like that, you know, and I jump up and I scream and holler and things like that. But see, I think that there's something that is really going to excite me one day. When I stand before God by myself, and there's not going to be anybody else around, it's just going to be me and him. 
And even though I know that all my sins should have condemned me to hell and that I was worthy to spend an eternity without Jesus, that every single negative thing that was attached to my life that should have condemned me, he will have taken every single one of those things. And as far as the east is from the west, he will take every single one of them and cast them that far away from me. I'm telling you, in that moment, I'm going to get excited, amen? In that moment, I'm going to get excited. In that moment, I might just go crazy and I might shout as loud as 